Hey gang, welcome. My name is Nathan Adam, and today we're going to be looking at how to produce and edit your own podcast in Adobe Audition. I'm going to be taking you this through the steps of recording into QuickTime if you are just recording externally on your computer or whether you're taking that from your phone or whether you want to record into Audition and then edit different pieces together into a podcast. We're going to walk through each of these steps over the next few minutes. It's going to be a great time. Let's go ahead and dive in. Step one, we need to go ahead and record our first audio clip. I'm using QuickTime Player here on the computer on this Mac and choosing File, New Audio Recording. Regardless of what you're recording with, the first thing you need to do is determine that your audio recording software is looking at the right hardware. Right now I'm using this blue Yeti microphone, so I'm going to come to this little downward arrow and make sure I choose the correct microphone amongst all the audio devices on my system. If you've got the MacBook Pro microphone, it's going to sound fairly thin, uh, certainly compared to something like a real podcasting mic like this. So I've got my Yeti stereo mic recorded and the maximum quality engaged. I'm checking my volume levels. The Yeti has its own gain knob that you can adjust on it. So you want to check whatever recording device you're using. Overall, you just want to make sure you're hitting good average levels here, but not too hot and not to where they would distort because that's obviously not going to sound good and it can't really be repaired perfectly afterwards. So we're going to record just a quick little dialogue so we have something to process with while we work through this. So I've brought up a selection from one of my favorite movies, the classic Shrek, where I will be attempting to nail the accents of both Donkey and Shrek. <coughs> so excuse me while we prepare to record. Woo, look at that. Who'd want to live in a place like that? Well, that would be my home. Oh, and it is lovely. You know, you're really quite a decorator. It's amazing what you've done with such a modest budget. I like that boulder. That is a nice boulder. And scene. All right, now that we've got that masterpiece recorded, let's go ahead and change the name here. I'm going to save this, Command S, and I'm going to save it as a Shrek and Donkey Podcast. Shrek and Donkey podcast QT for QuickTime so we know where it came from. You'll know it's saving it as an AIFC file. This is a full resolution AIF file and we'll be able to pull that into Audition a little bit later. Let's go ahead and launch Audition while we're at it. You may have it over on your sidebar or in your apps folder. I prefer to use Spotlight in the corner. Type in Adobe Audition and hit return. That should load up Audition into our settings ready to record. Now, what we need to do next is go ahead and look at setting up our inputs and our audio hardware. Just like we did that in QuickTime just a moment ago, I want to go ahead and set up the audio hardware to get audio into and out of Audition. When we click over here, go into Audition, Preferences, and Audio Hardware. Up here in this corner, as you click on that, it's going to show you all the possible preferences that you can find. We don't need to worry about most of these, but for right now, we just want to make sure that we have whatever the default input and output are that we want. So in my case, my audio is going to be coming in from this Yeti stereo microphone. I'll say yes so that it can continue. And default output, I want it to go out to my headphones. So if I was using only my headphones, I might choose the MacBook Pro speakers or headphones. In my case, I've got a bunch of different devices that all have audio outputs, including this Yeti that I'm recording uh, from and to and the software I'm using to capture with. So you should just choose whichever one is your current audio output to your speakers or headphones. And finally, I'm gonna set this IO buffer size fairly small, 128 or less should be ideal. That's gonna allow us to capture with very little latency. So when I speak into my microphone, I should hear it make it right back to my headphone with almost no delay. Once we've got that, I'm gonna hit okay, and then we're ready to start recording. All right, so now that we've got that dialed in, let me show you, if you didn't want to work in QuickTime, a separate program, you could actually record directly here into Audition, which when it first comes up, it may or may not be laid out quite like you're seeing here. So here's what I wanna show you. Under the Window menu, go to Workspaces, come to the default workspace, and then go to Window, Workspace, Reset to Save Layout. If you're like me, it may be you've had the experience of trying to learn some software before on YouTube, and right when the person goes to do the magic buttons or press on the right thing, it's like you look at your screen and you don't have those buttons. So one thing that works great about Adobe is if we use the same workspace and then you come over and you choose reset to save layout, your buttons and screens should be laid out like mine. If you find yourself at any point accidentally dragging things to the wrong place or buttons get out of whack and we whole screens start to look bizarre or like they don't have the right things, well, simple. Go to window, workspace, reset to save layout, 
and you'll be right back where we need. Go ahead and practice that right now, and then we'll hop right back in. So here we go. Let's go into the waveform editor first. You should see that in the upper left-hand corner. We've got two different options. One that's primarily used to let us record an individual audio file. Uh, the other that's let us design to build and layer multiple tracks of audio files. So for now, since we're just going to practice recording one under waveform, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to call this Shrek and Donkey Audition. So it's we know it came from Audition. I'm going to choose the same sample rate, mono, and set my settings to 32-bit float. That's currently the highest quality resolution we can get, and it should work great for uh, our audio purposes of podcasts. You could go to a much higher sample rate, but there's really no audible benefit for what we're going to be doing. So I'm going to say OK, and that brings me right into the Audition menu or the uh, audition recording scenario. So I'm going to come down to my levels at the bottom. And what I'd like to do is see how loud the signal is coming in. So I'm going to right click or use the uh, two finger click on the trackpad or control click if you don't have a uh, ability to right click and choose meter input signal. This symbol right here is the option key on your keyboard. So we could also hit command I or option I rather in this case. So with option I, we can now see how loud we're coming in. Now, if your microphone has a volume adjustment, again, just make that adjustment so that we're not distorting. We want to be shooting for a kind of a maximum level here around negative 18 with maybe high peaks being at negative 15. Looks pretty good right now. So now I simply need to hit this record button, much like we did in QuickTime, or you can see the shortcut is shift space. So let's go ahead and hit shift space. And I'm actually gonna put this on this side of the screen so that I can just kind of squished in over here and go back through and read my scene again. Ready, shift and space. Woo, look at that. Who'd wanna live in a place like that? Well, that would be my home. Ooh, and it is lovely. You know, you're really quite a decorator. It's amazing what you've done with such a modest budget. I like that boulder. That is a nice boulder. There we go. So, all right, we've got that done. I'm going to go ahead and stop this and put this back over here full. And you can see that we've recorded that entire thing, but we have the benefit of seeing the waveforms now in a couple different views. When we come back here in just a second, we'll look at how to use this to now clean up and make improvements and edits to our uh, recording. All right, well, now that we've got this, let's take a quick look around the Audition interface and learn what some of these tools are. So first here in the upper left-hand corner, we see where our files and favorites are. So our files, uh, the Shrek and Donkey mono audio file we just recorded, you can do things like make uh, open other folders, import files, or create new files from right here, making new audio files or multi-track sessions. Not something we need for now, but I do wanna go ahead and import the other uh, audio I recorded from uh, in QuickTime. So I'm going to go ahead and hit import or command I, and then let's go to the desktop and choose our Shrek and Donkey podcast QuickTime file. Now you can see there are two different types of files. That one was an AIFC. Uh, the one we recorded in audition, we recorded as a wave. That's okay. They're both usable audio files. So now both of them are available here in our list. Down here, we've got our media browser where we can go and find files, for example, on our hard drive, or maybe uh, if we've got them on an external thumb drive that we plug in like this external hard drive. Uh, so we'll be able to find projects and files in there. Down here, we'll see a list of every action that we do. So if I come in here, for example, and I select and delete something, I will see that delete audio action show up right here in the history. If I click back to record, you see it undoes and steps all the way back to that point. In fact, if I just stepped back to open, it's like I never recorded anything. If you accidentally get there, I'm going to click back to record so I don't lose that piece of audio. Great. So we're good to go. Um, and I keep instinctively saving. That's why you see that popping up. So what you're seeing here in the middle is both kind of a zoom overview. So you can actually scroll this side to zoom in and out on your audio. But I think most of the time you're going to prefer to simply use the plus and minus buttons on your keyboard, which will zoom you in towards these audio waveforms or zoom you out. Now, right now we are seeing also a spectral view and the uh, waveform view. So these two kind of views for uh, viewing our audio in different ways. Uh, this one's going to be a little bit outside of our purview for the purposes of a podcast, but it can be used for some incredible audio fixing, removing sounds and, and background noises and, and just um, 
any kind of noises so it's something that's pretty cool but you can simply adjust this middle bar to be able to show or hide it in general all right so now we're down here to the podcast uh I, you know i just like the spectral bar i'm gonna leave it up just a little bit so now it's time to do some editing and to do that we can actually just come up here to our tools along the top you notice that we have our spectral view uh, and our waveform view buttons We've also got this one that shows the pitch, so we could use that for actually adjusting pitch. Uh, I'm just gonna turn off both of those for now. And then you also have these tools that's to select and manipulate these waveforms. So I'm gonna hit the home key. So again, if you have a keyboard with no home button, it's the function left arrow. When I hit play those, whoa, look at that. We can hear the recording. Now, I don't need this stuff at the beginnings. So let's go ahead and select that, and I'm going to simply hit the delete key to clean that out. You'll notice it deletes it and it ripples the whole uh, file back to fill in the gap like it was never there. Now be aware, this is what we call destructive editing. So any changes I make here, while it's possible for me to step back to it, uh, ultimately when I save this file, that information is gone. If you're used to recording in something like GarageBand or Pro Tools, uh, you're used to non-destructive editing, which is what we'll get to when we look here at our multi-track session. But for now, this is a quick way to just delete stuff that you know you don't want. So let's go through and clean that out. Woo! So I don't want that big at the beginning. Woo! Look at that! Who'd want to live in a place like that? Well, that was... So I've got a little breath here I don't really need. Now here's the deal. If I take that out, of course I can always edit this stuff up and move it around later, but... Place like that. But I also kind of like the space in there. So in this case, I'm going to just select that breath, which I don't really want the breath. And you notice you get this little heads up display that lets me simply come up and click on either this knob or the uh, little plus zero dB and simply click and turn it down. And you can see that I can turn up or down, add gain or take away gain from that little section. So I'm actually just going to bring it way down and then click over here and hear how it sounds. In a place like that, well, that would be... I like it. I lost the little breath, but I kept the space. So that's another thing we can do is simply adjust the volume of clips if they're a little too loud or a little too soft. In a place like that, well, that would be my home. Ooh. So for example, I'm not a fan of all the noise I'm hearing here. So I'm going to come in and then just turn that down. Even turning it down 10 or 20 dB is going to be significant. Home. Ooh, and it is lovely. You know, you're really quite a decorator. It's amazing what you've done with such a modest budget. I like that boulder. That is a nice boulder. Crazy. There we go. So, all right, we've got that done. I'm going to go ahead. All right, so I can go ahead and scroll over here. Uh, I'm just simply using either my trackpad to scroll left, right, up, and down. Uh, you can scroll up and down to be able to zoom in on specific words. So if there were things I was wanting to remove, like over here. There we go. So, all right, like this, there we go. I can simply grab all of this here to the end and delete it. And again, if I want to lose even a little bit more, I can do that right there. Nice boulder. Woo. Now I will say, I'm going to undo that just a little bit because when I look over here at the end, I kind of feel like I lost the breath. So I'm going to undo that deletion and maybe just delete this last part just a very little bit. Nice boulder. Woo. Nice. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and save that Shrek and Donkey audition. And boom. So we have now saved this file. So this is the newest version of it. And we don't really need to do anything else. If you did find that you had uh, maybe a, a word or two that was just way too loud, again, you could always come in and select it and then simply try to grab this uh, volume gain adjustment and kind of level that out. But I'll be showing you how to do some of that here over in the other window to even it out a bit. So I would say only use this if it's really extreme. Of course, if you have whole sections of the dialog that you wanted to remove, you can simply select them and delete. You know, you're really quite a decorator. I like that boulder. In that case, you wouldn't even know it was gone. If you, you can hear it was a whole section that we lost. You're really quite a decorator. It's amazing what you've done with such a modest budget. Great. So go through, clean up your session, save it, and then we'll be ready to pick this back up in the multi-track editor. All right, let's go ahead and throw this over into a multi-track session. So to do that, I'm simply going to come and click on multi-track, and it's going to ask me to name this session. So I'm going to call it Nathan's Shrek 
and donkey podcast and save that to the desktop with the same settings that I had earlier, 48K, 32-bit float, and stereo. Uh, I don't need a template for this. You'll see that there is some po uh, podcast templates that you could choose. We're gonna build that on our own, so I'm simply gonna hit OK, and that's gonna bring us into our multitrack sequence, where I can see the multitrack session, which ends in .sesx, so that's the audition file, and then the wave and AIF files that we had earlier. And just to show you that I'm gonna command tab over to the finder here and open up a desktop window, and you'll see that there is the Shrek and Donkey podcast with the .sesx file. Now, it did not move these other audio files into it. The Shrek and Donkey Audition, or the PKF, or the WAV file, uh, the WAV file, or the AIFC file. So if I wanted to, I'd probably pretty be pretty smart to move those into this folder. So if I just grab them and drag them in. Now watch what may happen. When I pop over here to Audition, it's possible sometimes that it loses track of where those files went. So you want to make sure that you keep them in the same folder with the uh, session file, the SESX file. It's going to keep things a lot more organized. Now, let's go ahead and drag these files into Audition and start to do some editing in here that is non-destructive. So I'm going to drag in our Shrek and Donkey podcast clip. And in the second track, I'll grab my Audition clip and drag it down. Now, if you're recording or trying to line up multiple audio clips that started maybe uh, you had somebody recording on one side of a phone call with QuickTime and somebody was recording something else on the other side and you were trying to sync up the conversation, well, you can use the waveforms to be able to try to line up maybe those first words or ideally some sort of a clap that you tried to sync up. One, two, three, you know, and capture that at the but in our case, we've got at least these words, and you can see that we have the edited Shrek and Donkey Audition that I recorded in Audition, and the unedited one from QuickTime. So let's have a little overview of what we're seeing here on the screen so that we can make our edits and, uh, and end up with our final podcast. So first thing, uh, we've already looked at kind of zooming in and out. So we can use the plus and minus keys on our keyboard to zoom in and out wherever our playhead is. That's this blue arrow and red line. So if I zoom in, you see it's gonna take me towards those words. And if I set my playhead before and yeah, hit play, that would be my that would be my home. So you can see that now we're hearing both of these together. So I'm gonna zoom out a little bit with the minus key. That lets me get in and out of uh, the seeing the waveform. And you also have this special trick in Adobe Audition called the tilde key. Right above the tab key on your keyboard when you go and you look at it, right above the tab key is that little squiggle, the tilde key. And if you would like to see any window in Audition full screen, you simply hover your mouse over it and hit the tilde key and that toggles it to be full screen or smaller. Full screen for this favorites and files window or small regular, full screen history or smaller. So we'll use this a whole lot when we're simply looking at this, this multi-track set of uh, tracks. So it's nice to be able to fill up your screen with it. All right, so now let's just look at editing real quick here inside uh, of the multi-track view. Let's say I wanted to compare these two takes. I'm gonna go ahead and mute track two, but you will notice something about it. This QuickTime file that I recorded, recorded in stereo. In other words, you can see this very similar looking sounds on the top half of this and on the bottom. So that's because when I recorded in Qu the QuickTime file, it was stereo by default. It recorded a separate audio track for the left side and separate one for the right. So there's the left and there's the right. And that was one microphone, so it ended up sounding identical on both sides, which basically just made it a little louder. But you see that the QuickTime one was mono, so it only has one waveform in the middle. So right off the bat, that's not gonna make a huge difference either way. Uh, they'll sound about the same volume, but let's go ahead and edit this one here on track one. You can either hover your mouse between the tracks and click and drag it down to make it taller. Uh, you can also just hit the plus arrows to move in. But let's see what our tools are for editing this. First, when you hover over the left side or right side of one of these clips, you should see this red trim tool pop up. With that one, we can simply click and trim to remove any excess audio. We can also come up to this little fade box where we see the fade in. Clicking and dragging on that is gonna add a fade. Now be careful with making it too long because you typically don't want your fades to go over the audio 
Otherwise, it's going to make it all turn up very quietly down here and get louder over time. Let's listen to that. Ooh, look at that. Who'd want to live in a place like that? So that's not ideal. So, But I do want to have a little fade maybe right here at the beginning that ends right before the audio starts. Ooh, look at that. Who'd want to live in a place like that? Now I can tell that QuickTime, when I recorded it there, uh, maybe my gain was a little too hot, but I can see that I'm uh, clipping because I can see that these waveforms go louder than the top. So, and I can even see the distortion happen Ooh, up here. Ooh, look at that. Who'd want to live in a place like that? So uh, it's good, but you know, I wonder if I could swap in these other words or swap in these lines and we could build it that way. I think we might. Let's try it and we're going to do it this way. I'm going to solo one, and then I'll solo the other, and see uh, which one sounds better for that line. So let's solo this first one and play those two lines. Ooh, look at that! Who'd want to live in a place like that? Okay, we definitely saw us and heard some distortion there. I'm going to solo this one, unsolo that, which mutes. Ooh, look at that! Who'd want to live in a place like that? So, while I like the performance better on the first one, uh, it doesn't distort on the second one. So, it's not bad, but I think we're just going to stick with the second one here. Um, we could certainly go in and now trim off the front of that, but let's try this next line because it might actually be better. So, here we go. I'm going to mute this one instead of soloing so we can hear this next line. Oh, well, that would be my home. All right, so crushing that, obviously, really nailing the uh, Scottish accent. Uh, I'm going to solo this one out. Well, that would be my home. Hmm, I kind of like that one a little bit better. But since this is Shrek, I think what I want is I want to have Donkey on one track, and I want to have Shrek on his own track. So what we need to do is split this out into its own clip. No problem. I'm simply going to come to over here to the Razor Selected Clips tool. Uh, that starts with the, or the shortcut is the letter R. So when I switch to R, you see I get this razor blade, and I can quickly cut this audio up. Now to switch back to my main tool, the Move tool, or V, the V Move tool is going to let me click on and grab this as its own clip and drag it down to its own track. Now be aware where you click matters, because obviously if you click on the fade here, you're going to add a fade. If you click on this line, it's actually going to adjust the volume of the clip. So you want to be thoughtful about that. I want to leave that at 0.0, .0 dB that you see it's at right now. But that is starting to work. Let's test these last few things. And of course, if you recorded a long podcast, uh, you might, you know, just be going through and removing extra ums and ahs and spaces. But we can continue to do that in here. Let's go ahead and listen to this next line. Oh, and it is lovely. Hmm, interesting. Next Ooh, one. Oh, and it is lovely. Hmm, I kind of like that one. But so far, this audition one is just sounding cleaner. Ooh, and it is lovely. You know, you're really quite a decorator. It's amazing what you've done with such a modest budget. I like that boulder. That is a nice boulder. Now, let's just stick with this second one. I'm liking it. Uh, so the other thing I might want to do, though, is remove some of these space, like these gaps in the middle, or maybe change the timing. So first, I'm going to come in here and just trim out some of this excess. Any of that noise that's in the background, I don't want. So I'm just going to trim this out and maybe tighten up the timing by pushing these things a little bit closer together. Uh, I'm going to unsolo this and simply mute this first track since I don't think I'm going to use it. I'm going to so, live in a place like that. Well, that would be my home. Ooh. Now, I definitely want this timing a little tighter here. So I'm going to move this Shrek and Donkey that. up. Who would want to live in a place like that? Well, that would be... I think even Shrek needs to be a little closer to Donkey. Who'd want to live in a place like that? Well, that would be my home. And Donkey needs to react like he's been caught. Like, oh, he just insulted Shrek's home. In fact, I'm going to come over here, and we want to just trim all of this up. So I'm going to switch back to... I could switch to my uh, razor tool again, but that's actually a slower way than I would want to, because that involves cutting, cutting, switching back to the selection tool with V, and then deleting, that's too many steps. What I would do instead is simply come up to this uh, time selection tool or the T key. When I switch to that, now it looks just like I'm selecting a sentence in Microsoft Word. And if you hold the, if you simply hit the delete button, it's gonna delete that and leave a gap, meaning I now have to move everything over. If I hold the option button down while deleting it, you'll notice it deletes it and it ripples that gap closed. So it actually shuffled it uh, right into place. So that's really handy. Um, so be aware if you just hold that option key down, that is going to 
delete that gap. So let's see how that sounds. And it's made a little set of endpoints and out points. I'm going to right click and choose clear time selection with the G key. And let's listen Ooh, to it. Oh, look at that. Who'd want to live in a place like that? Well, that would be my home. All right, I'm liking that. So continue to adjust your timing. I'm going to get these in here. You want it to really kind of have some fun and feel. And trim those together. Look here at we go. That. Who'd want to live in a place like that? Maybe brushes look it a little bit. Look at that. Who'd want to live in a place like that? Well, that would be my and look Shrek. at that here we go who'd want to live in a place like that well, that would be my home and don't look get at that there. who'd want to live in a place like that well, that would be my home oh and it is lovely you know you're really quite a decorator it's amazing what you've done with such a modest budget i like that now if this were the movie i'm sure there's time for a good pause there i'm going to hit the time tool again select this and then option delete just to Option delete, just to delete a little Such bit of that time. Budget. I like that boulder. That is a nice boulder. Nice. So I'm going to go ahead and trim this off, add little fades. And the other thing I want to do is any place we've got two pieces of audio playing back to back like that, um, we typically want to have a fade of some kind, a cross fade going between them. So I'm going to select this, switch back to my move tool with the V key. And I'm going to click on this fade and actually Maybe, you know, I think I might need to actually put these overlap. So if I grab this and I just move it over a little bit, you notice it actually starts to crossfade them together. So you see those double fade as one is fading out here, the other one is fading in. Let's see how that sounds. Done with such a modest budget. I like that boulder. That is a nice boulder. Awesome. Now, in this case, I've got all these different clips. I've come in, I've added my fades. I want to make sure I add fades on the edges of every single clip, every single one. And you'll notice if you hover over it, it actually gives you some little options. It says hold option to apply basic fades, hold command to change the fade shape, or shift to fix either the fade duration or shape. So I could go in and make different kinds of fades if I felt like I needed that. So if I click and drag, you see it gives me a basic fade. If I hold option, it actually lets me add fades to the beginning and end at the same time. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to grab this one do the same thing. Hold Option down and add a little fade to the beginning and end. I'm going to trim that audio up a smidge. And good. Same with this guy. Fade out. Hold Option and just add a little fade out and fade in. So I think we're starting to get somewhere. Um, of course, you've probably got more audio than this, but you just want to go through and do the same thing. Um, be aware, though, that if you have two uh, pieces of two recordings that need to stay in sync, you want to be careful about going through and deleting individual pieces and moving a whole clip because that's obviously going to throw them out of sync. So what you would want to do if you needed to move them together, uh, for example, let's say that this one, you know, and we were trying to go through and we just wanted to delete a whole section of time, maybe in both of these, I would switch to my time selection tool T. And if I just knew that I didn't need this entire piece from both of those clips, you know, then I could simply either hit the delete key to get rid of it and then go select all of these and move them all back. So that's one option. Or if I select that whole chunk where I can just delete the whole thing and I option delete. Ooh. Yeah, but even that now I would say just your best bet is going to be to just delete it and then simply click and drag over to select all of those remaining pieces and then drag those back. But that way, the two different uh, takes or recordings, if you're record talking about a recorded podcast with two different people or two different recordings, would stay in sync. And then you could go through and, of course, uh, delete out anything else. Just make sure that you delete equally on both tracks. So, all right, that is getting us into a pretty good place. I'm going to undo the last bunch of things we did. And I'm going to go ahead and switch to my move tool, select this and lose that one. I'm going to go ahead and delete track one too because I don't need it. In fact, I think I'm going to want to delete all of the tracks that I don't need. So we'll come back and we'll clean up that session in just a second. All right, so to get ready to start mixing this, let's clean up our session and remove anything we don't need. So uh, I could put some music or some things up in this track. I think what I really want though is to simply, I'm going to move this down and I'm going to name this first track by double clicking on it and call that one Donkey. 
And this one, I'm going to double click and name Shrek. S-H-R-E-K. Sweet. So now I, I think I'd like a little bit of music in the background. Um, maybe I don't need it for this one, but you might use music. Uh, I, so I've just put some song options for some music that we have licensed, uh, some royalty-free music. Let me see what we've got here. Uh, not quite. Maybe. Definitely not. All right, let's just throw some music in here just in case. I'm going to just click and drag it up into uh, the session. It says the sample rate is different. So do you want me to make a copy and then make it match the sample rate? The answer to this is pretty much always yes in this case. So it's creating a copy that actually is going to work with this session. So right now, if I hit play, it's going to be way too loud for this. Way too loud, obviously. So there's a couple of ways we can change that. First, let me zoom out. I'm gonna hit that minus button a bunch of times until I can see, wow, that just goes on and on and on. So instead, what I wanna do, I'm gonna just use the razor blade tool. So I switch to the R key, and that way I can just cut off the end of this. Switch back to the V tool or the move tool with the V key, and then I can delete that excess. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and move all of these audio bits kind of back closer to the beginning. And that's going to be my recording. And then we're about ready to kind of lay this in. Now, let's say I just wanted this music kind of in the background. Well, one of the beautiful things about Audition is they actually give us uh, what they call the essential sound panel, which lets us really dial things in quickly and have it sound really good. It's so it's incredible. You don't even really have to be much of an audio engineer. So by adding a little bit of music in here, uh, if I wanted to clean up the rest of these tracks, I'd come in and I'd select them. And I'd come to the multi-track tracks and find the delete selected track or the shortcut is option command delete. So not easy to remember, but option command delete will delete excess tracks. So I'm going to leave the master on there. In fact, I might even leave track four in case we want to go adding some other sound effects. But right now, let's just go ahead and dial this in. I'm going to change this track one and I'm going to name it music and I'm going to select that. And if you don't see the essential sound panel on the right, go to window, essential sound, and turn it on. So window, essential sound, and that's gonna pop it up right here. Now you'll notice there's some presets for different things, music, sound effects, ambience. Uh, instead of using those, let's just go straight to our settings right here. I've got the music clip selected, and I'm gonna come over and give it a tag of music. Now, if you accidentally click the wrong one, you click sound effects, simply click clear audio type, and then go back and dub it music. Now, just doing that is now telling Audition that this is a music track. And when I select it, it only gives me these uh, essential sound options that we might use for music. So the main one that we need right now, I'm gonna to toggle duration and ducking closed by clicking on their name, is up under loudness, I'm gonna click auto match. And what that did is it auto matched to a target loudness of negative 25 loudness units, L-U-F-S, loudness units, full scale. So that is kind of a standard volume for uh, music. And so I'm just gonna come over here, trim off that beginning, and maybe put it here, and let's see how it sounds. Let's go ahead and hit the home button, and... Ooh, look at that. Who'd wanna live in a place like that? Well, that would be my home. Ooh, and it is love. I mean, this is trippy, but I don't have any better music for it, and I'm doing it with Shrek. So that's actually quite a bit better than uh, whatever else I might have found. Now, that works for me, but let's go through and do this to the rest of our audio clips. These are not music, obviously. So I'm going to click, and I'm going to select over them, and I'm going to treat all of these like one big clip, since it was one performance. But I might end up wanting to go with a different sound for Shrek. So I'm just going to grab all the donkey clips and click Dialog and go to loudness and let's do the same thing auto match those to a standard average loudness for dialogue auto match and bam look at the difference look at the difference in these waveforms here's where we originally were with a lot of dynamic range some lines really loud some really soft and then auto match evens them all out let's see how that sounds Ooh, look at that who'd want to live in a place like that well, that would be my home Ooh, and it is lovely all right, not bad. Now I can still tell that this music is way too loud, but the other thing is I wanna come in here and see what options I have. Now, if you're trying to repair anything that has noise, so for example, this, uh, this microphone actually is picking up some fan noise from my computer. So I could actually try to record some of this noise just so you can hear what's happened. I'm gonna solo a track and hit record, and I'm gonna record something with this fan noise. You ready? OK, 
Okay, now one thing I do need to do is make sure that my input is actually coming in from the right place. So if I make sure I'm going to my Audition audio hardware, is coming in from the microphone. Great. All right. So let me just record something and with a lot of noise so you can see what can happen. So I'm going to record really close and just record some of this, but I've got the microphone down close to the noise of the fan. So I'll stop it now. All right, and let's see how that sounds. Okay. Now, if I play that back, you should hear and just record some of this, but I've got the a lot of noise. So watch how amazing this is. If I select this, tag it as dialogue, auto match the loudness so it's nice and present, and just record. I can come here to reduce noise and listen to the difference. And just record some of this, but I've got the microphone. It completely eliminates the fan noise. It does a great job at reducing bright, kind of high-end sort of noise. If you have low rumbly noise, you can remove that. Uh, if you hear a hum, you can remove that. If I had really bright S's, DS's, you can remove that. Most of these are going to sound best around the middle setting. Uh, you can go less if you don't need as much. If you go a lot harder, you'll actually hear, watch, I'm going to just crank this up. It'll start to sound kind of bubbly and a little warbly. So let's, let's see what it sounds like. And just record some of this, but I've got the microphone down close to the noise. Uh, it's not bad, but it, it definitely sounds worse. So anyway, that's what the repair section does, but we don't really need it for any of these tracks. So come back up and on solo. And I like in the way these sound, but let's go ahead and let's make it even a little punchier. So since I don't need repair, I'm gonna to come to clarity and you'll see I've got some options. So dynamics says it changes the impact of recording by compressing or expanding the dynamic range. Compressing meaning, well, I can just show you. If I reset this, you see that the, the dynamic range there's a big difference between the loudest loud and the softest soft in this recording, which means it has a big dynamic range. So if it was much smaller difference, then it has a small dynamic range. So a lot of times with dialogue and radio and podcasts, we don't really want a ton of dynamic range. We want them to be pretty consistent and pretty audible all the time. You don't really want them to be nice and loud one time and then get really that's really annoying when you're a listener trying to watch something or listen to something. Um, you want consistent audio. So with my loudness auto matched, I could still make it even more focused, clicking on dynamics and tightening that up. And then we could just turn this on and off to see what it sounds like. Ooh, look at that. Who'd want to live in a place like that? Well, that would be my home. Ooh, and it is lovely. You know, it's definitely, I mean, it sounds good. So uh, I'm going to stick with just a little bit of dynamics added there. And then finally, EQ is going to let me adjust the tone. Now, you might have a use for some of these effects. Like I could make Donkey sound like he's been locked in the trunk. And I'm going to mute this music just so we can hear what it sounds like without. Woo, look at that. So Donkey finally lost it. Shrek locked him in the trunk. Um, I could also go to something like the old telephone sound. You can see what that's doing is cutting out all the low frequencies and the high frequencies. So, Ooh, look at that. Who'd want to live? That's kind of the way you sound on a telephone because it tends to lose the lowest and the highest frequencies. Or you could come for something like podcast voice, which is going to add a little bit of a boost in these low mid frequencies and a little bit of a boost in these upper mids. Let's see how that sounds. Ooh, look at that. Who'd want to live in a place like that? Well, that would be my home. Ooh, and it is lovely. You know, you're really quite a decorator. It's amazing what you've done with such a modest budget. I like You know what? That sounds pretty good. I could also try some of these others like that public radio sound. Ooh, look. But actually, I really am digging that podcast voice. So that's going to help try one and see if you like it. You can uh, crank it up even more to make it really exaggerated. But unless your audio sounds pretty bad, uh, then that's probably too much. But let's, let's just see. Ooh, look at that. Ooh. Now, I do notice that I am clipping a little bit here. You're seeing reds uh, and stuff in this. So I'm going to pull this back down to somewhere just there, kind of in the middle. Ooh, look at that. Who'd want to live in a place like that? Now, I'm still looking for, if I'm still clipping up here in the reds, after I've done these other things, I can either reduce the amount of this uh, gain, essentially, that I'm adding on the dynamics and EQ section, or if I like those, I can just pull down the overall clip level, and I'm just going to pull it down a couple dB until I stop seeing that red overloading. Ooh, look at that. 
Who'd want to live in a place like that? Well, that would be my home. Ooh. Great. Uh, what I want to do is I want to copy and paste all of these settings from one onto the other. So I've got this uh, uh, particular set of things dialed in and I could do a lot of things. I could save this. I could come up here and save this as a preset and maybe call it my uh, donkey voice processing. And then if I wanted to, I could literally come to the Shrek clip, tag that as dialog, and then choose the preset, mm, donkey voice processing. Bam! And you can see, we've just pasted all of those same effects onto donkey voice processing. So let's see how this sounds right now. Ooh, look at that! Who'd want to live in a place like that? Uh-oh, something happened at the look end of that word. That. Who'd want to live in a place like that? Well, that would be my home. Ooh, and it is lovely. You know... You're really quite a decorator. It's amazing what you... All right, so that is working for us. And now if we want to layer in that music, we can turn this back on and start to look at how we can automate this uh, over time. So let's hit the home cut key. Ooh, look at that. Who'd want to live in a place like that? Well, that would be my home. Ooh, and it is lovely. All right. So in our case, same thing. I've got this music. I feel like it needs to come down. So I could simply select it and just bring the whole clip level down. In this case, I'm going to bring it down. Uh, my recommendation is to do it in like 3 dB increments. So for the average new engineer or new person trying to mess with audio, 3 dB is going to be a, a distinctly audible adjustment. 1 dB down or up should be hearable but not if you're on bad speakers or maybe if your ears aren't trained but 3 db you're going to notice a difference but i tell you that because you don't necessarily want to start with like 25 db that'll be a substantial change in volume but even bringing it down in increments of 3 db you're going to be able to hear the difference so let's even double it and go down to six because i just want this music to be kind of background Ooh, look at that who'd want to live in a place like that well, that would be my home Ooh, and it is lovely you know, you're really quite a decorator. It's All right, so that is sounding good. Now, if we want, I want to go ahead and make sure I've got a nice little fade in and a fade out. So uh, I could come over here and I could trim this. And of course, I could simply draw a fade in and draw a fade out. Or like we learned earlier, hold the option key and adjust them both. And let's see what happens. Ooh, look at that. Who'd want to live in a place like that? Well, that would be my home. Ooh, and it is lovely. All right, so you're seeing that that's helping, but we also can simply come to this volume line and by uh, when you get your mouse right in the place where you see volume and that little slash, you could simply click and drag the line up or down. So you'll notice that's not related to this volume level for whatever reason. Uh, they've just got multiple ways you can adjust the volume. So this one actually adjusts essentially the audio inside the clip. This one allows you to adjust the volume uh, of the clip over time. Woo. So for example, if I wanted to bring it down or up at different places, I could come to this volume automation line, double click and start putting in automation points. So for example, if I just wanted to bring it up during this one little section, by adding all these points in here, I can actually click and drag and have the volume go up and down over time. Woo, look at that. Yeah, let me just bring it up here. Oops, I accidentally clicked on the audio. And if I double click and add some more in, you'll hear this music go up and down. Ooh, look at that. Who'd want so in this case, I don't really want to uh, manipulate this a whole lot, but if you're recording a podcast and you've got sections where you need the music to be down even lower, then you could come in and make them turn down even lower here during the middle, maybe. Let me pull that down. So it could start with a little more volume. And then it kind of comes down a little bit and then it comes back up after the conversation is done and let's see how that sounds Ooh, look at that who'd want to live in a place like that well, that would be my all right so that's one thing i actually don't really think i need any of these right now uh, but maybe i'll just leave a couple in here if you right click on them you can choose delete selected keyframes so that's a simple way of just getting rid of some of them. Or if you simply select them and hit the delete key, that also will get rid of them. So maybe I'll bring down just this music a little bit even more while the dialogue is happening. Ooh, look at that. Who'd want to live in a place like that? Well, that would be my home. Nice. 
All right, it's actually working pretty well. So we'll come back here in just a second and get ready to wrap up this podcast. All right, just as one last thing, I'm going to say that if you have the opportunity or if you need some stock audio sounds, uh, you might either have uh, access to some free stock audio sounds that you could add some additional sound effects into your track. Under the, I believe, the help menu, you can choose download sound effects and more, and that will take you to a huge stock of Adobe sound effects. 27 bundles, 10,000 high quality effects. I'm going to choose view downloads, and you'll see we've got a whole bunch of different sort of sounds that you can use to really uh, make this, make the effects a lot more uh, make everything just a lot more kind of like impact. So for example, if I was to download these drones or explosions fully, there's a whole bunch of different things. So I mean, let me see if there's anything in here that seems like it would apply production. Um, you know, production elements. If you choose download, let's see what we got production elements. So you really would just have to download a whole bunch of these. And I can't really think of anything that seems like it would definitely relate. Ambience. Let's see if we've got some of these. All right, so I actually had a few of these that I downloaded just from some uh, ambient effects. Let's see if any of these seem like they might be the same sort of space that Donkey and Shrek would be occupying. Sounds luminous. Hmm. You know what, it's kind of funny because it's like Shrek and Donkey moved into our world. So you, I'm gonna go ahead and click and drag this sound effect up. It's going to make a new copy at the correct sample rate. I'm going to say OK. Then I'm going to put this over here. Ooh, now I notice that it's not quite long enough to go underneath the whole track. So, hmm, what are we going to do? Well, first I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say that this is ambience. When I click on ambience, I can now choose loudness and auto match for a level to see if it uh, sounds appropriate balanced with Shrek and Donkey and maybe even this music. Let's see. Ooh, look at way too loud so i'm going to grab it right here and just bring the whole clip down click and drag let's bring it down like 9 db Ooh, look at that who'd want to live in a place like that well, that would be my home Ooh, and it is lovely you know you're really quite a decorator it's a no nah, it's not bad but i do need it less than that this is just supposed to be ambience after all Ooh, look at that who'd want to live in a place like that well, that all right, now, problem is, of course, it doesn't go long enough. So what do we do? Well, here's our trick. I'm gonna hold the Option key down, and when I do, you'll notice this arrow turns into two arrows. And when I click and I drag, it actually makes a copy of the clip. Super handy, right? Plus, I can simply click and drag them over one another, and they'll cross-fade into one another as well. Super cool. I'm just gonna come back here and trim this so that they kind of like just slowly fade into one another. And look for another opportunity here. Maybe trim that back. And let's see how that sounds. Oh, you're really quite a decorator. It's amazing what you've done with such a modest budget. I like that boulder. That is a nice boulder. All right, not bad, but again, still way too loud. So I'm going to click and drag. But you see, it is treating this as two separate clips because it is two separate clips. So I've brought these way down. And let's see if that's any closer or better. Oh, you're really quite a decorator. Maybe just oh, a hair more. you're really quite a decorator. It's amazing what you've done with such a modest budget. I like that boulder. That is a nice boulder. <laughs> All right, it's so funny with that audio. But I'm going to go ahead and add a fade out and a fade on this side. Click and fade, and now these two pieces are fading together, and all of a sudden we've got some stuff oh, starting to work. really quite a decorator. It's amazing what you've done with some... And let's see, is this one auto-matched? Auto-match. And auto-match. Oh, you're okay. really quite a decorator. Well, there you go. We have... Uh, taken our time to add some automations, uh, use the essential sound panel to dial in some of our sounds. We have uh, built up a little bit of an ambience track and of course we could go in and add more sound effects. If I had like a bird sound, ambience, birds. You know what, why not? I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna make one more track, track, add stereo audio track, and then that dog is going in here somewhere. Let's copy it. 
And I think maybe the dog even starts the whole thing off. Let's trim this bad boy back. Zoom in with my plus key. Hold the function key and go back. And I know we're going to need this down, so let's bring it way back. Way back. Way down. Woo, look at that. Who'd want to live in a place like that? All right, that's a little bit better. And... Woo, look at that. Who'd want to live in a place like that? Well, that would be my home. Ooh, and it is lovely. You know... Yeah, it's a little distracting. But I think if it comes in right before they start talking, then it's kind of like giving the idea of maybe this annoying neighborhood dog uh, that Donkey is looking at. I don't know. I'm imagining the story in my head. Woo, look at that. Who'd want to live in a place like that? All right, so we've added some sound effects. We have added our uh, fades. We have done our mixing. We've recorded from Quam. We've rec recorded inside of Adobe Audition. Last thing, we need to export this uh, in a file format that we can either upload, email, or hold on to for safekeeping. So go into the file menu and let's go to export multitrack mix down entire session. File export multitrack entire session. So with this entire session selected, I'm going to hit that and it's going to say, well, what do you want to call this? Well, I'm going to call it Nathan's Shrek and Donkey Podcast underscore Mixdown. Where's it going to go? Well, when I click browse, you'll see that it's putting it in the project or wherever I want it to go. So I'm going to pop back over, I think, on my desktop where I've got my Shrek and Donkey Podcast. And there's my recorded files. I'm going to make myself a little folder in here and just call this exports and or mix downs whatever you want i'm going to save this uh, what file format wave files is the industry standard so we're going to stick with that and i'm going to leave the sample rate and bit depth all kind of the same this is going to create a master quality full quality version of this uh, that we could also you know do a compressed version as well so if we wanted to come up here and make an mp3 version but right now we've got this ready to go um, and mix down options the entire session from the master and hit OK. And bam, if we pop over here onto our desktop and look in there, we should see now in my exports folder, there's the Shrek and Donkey podcast mix down. Woo, look at that. Who'd want to live in a place like that? Well, that would be my home. Ooh, and it is love. I mean, I gotta say, I'm really proud of this. It's it's everything I hoped for and dreamed. So, but we've got our sound. If you do want a smaller version, note that this is 7.3 megabytes. That's very emailable, but this is only like 20 seconds. Uh, at the quality that we recorded it, you're probably gonna be looking at like 20 megabytes a minute. So you're also gonna want an MP3 compressed version. So let's go to file, export, multitrack, mix down entire session. And let's make one that is not a Wave PCM. Let's make one that does either an MP3 or an AAC. MP3 is going to be the most compatible with uh, audio players everywhere and be very um, about one tenth of the size of a Wave file. Uh, AAC is one that is commonly found also everywhere at this point, but it was uh, introduced by Apple originally for the iPod and of course later the iPhone. So I'm just going to make an MP3 and let it stick with its same settings. Otherwise, if I wanted to save even more space, I could squash it down to something like 128 kilobits per second MP3. But unless you are trying to deliver this to a third world country, I'm going to stick with 192 kilobits. Say OK and export. Boom. Just that quick. We have our MP3 down here and it is half of one megabyte. So it's 1 15th. Is that right? Yeah, 1 15th or so the size of the WAV file. Let's see if they sound substantially different. Here's the WAV file. Woo, look at that. And the next one. Woo, look at that. Woo. Now you are losing a little bit of high frequency detail, but in a podcast, most people aren't going to hear that. So uh, in this case, it's sounding pretty good and it's ready to be uploaded, exported, or sent off wherever you need to to turn in your project. So hopefully that introduces you to all of the functions available uh, that we would use in a typical quick podcast production. If you need more help, give me a shout, uh, nathan.adam at belmont.edu. And thanks so much. We'll see you next time.